Hi guys, welcome back to Matchware Mind View 6. This is my no messing about video tutorials on using software, making it easy to use, breaking it down and making it simplistic. So we're going to look at project management. Now when I first looked at project management, it looked kind of complicated. But using it in Matchware Mind View, it really does break it down and makes using it so much easier. You can actually create a project in Mind View as a map and then export it as a gank chart. Or you can switch between the two and it works so well as you're planning and organizing your project management. So let's have a little look first. You've got my map, top down or left to right, and these are your maps that you can create. Obviously a my map will start the main idea in the middle when you work around with your tasks. Task main task at the top when you work down and main task from left or to right. Timeline, that's great for scheduling lectures or meetings. Outline, which is a linear format, and of course Gank chart, which we're looking at today, project management. But I'm going to use the Gank chart with my map, and I'm going to swap between the two and show you how easy it is to use. Now, click on my map, and we'll be ready to go. So, click in the first branch. Let's type in a project we want to do. So, how about garden project? I need to start the garden. But I'm going to get round to it. After this, with the cost, I probably won't either. I need to create my first task of garden project. So you can either put the cursor in the corner and double click the left mouse button, or double tap the trackpad, or click the enter key. So there was our first task. So what's my first task going to be? Of course, I think I'm going to use laying the turf. Really important. And I'm going to create my second task. Double tap the corner, click the enter key, or you can even right click and use the insert. There's many options to create branches. Click on idea and what's going to be my second task? So after laying the turf, I think probably laying decking will be next. It will be an expensive project this is. So let's go back to laying the turf. Well I've not really planned my project yet ever. I've just done garden project, laying turf, laying decking. But I need to break down laying turf for example. Labour, I don't have someone else doing it. I need to buy the resources as well and I need to set out the time it's going to take and that's the whole point of project management. So, with Lane Turf highlighted and select this option here called Timeline. Now we've got Document Type. Now you can use this for creating task lists or Timeline which is good for sort of creating task lists as well but that's also good for scheduling things as a timeline. Good for historic timelines or just scheduling your lectures or your meetings. But what I want to do is click the middle option, which is project management. And it will tell you the plan rather than a simple task list. So this will be your project management. And we're ready to go. So laying turf. So how long it's going to take me to lay the turf? Well, that depends on the various resources and projects I need to do within laying the turf. For example, I need to level first. So I need to get rid of a lot of turf. So I need to get rid of a lot of soil. Then I might have to leave it a week to settle before I can start laying the turf. So there's quite a lot to it. So let's break down laying turf. So create another little branch by right clicking this time. Or you can double tap with the trackpad or double click the mouse or click the insert key as a shortcut key. So I'm going to select sub branch. So the first thing I need to do is level. Level the soil. Which is great. There's a lot of tasks I need to do to actually level the soil. So with level the soil highlighted I'm going to need a skip to get rid of the excess soil. I'm also going to need shovels and rakes and also labour to level it. So let's make a start. So level the soil. I reckon that's going to take quite a while. You have to leave it about four to five days I think after you've rotivated it. So I'm going to click here. We've got the 20 second start date. So I'm going to say this is going to take eight days. I might as well do a job properly. As you see I've clicked on eight days here. It's changed the date from the 22nd to the end date 31st. So I've got my garden project. First thing is laying the turf, so I need to level the soil first. So it's going to take me eight days. But I still need to add the resources I need to require to do that. So as I scroll down, priority, obviously high priority, I'm going to put a thousand. Unless I get this done, I can't do anything else. Completion, well, I expect that to be done in the eight days, so I'm going to put 100%. Now, resources. Click the button on the right to bring up your resources option. So it's asking you first, what's your first resource you'll need? So let me hold the left button to this over. I would thought it would be shovels. Can't do anything about shovels first. So I'm going to put shovels in there. Click off that. What other resource would I need? 
rakes. Depending on how many people doing it. And I'm going to need a skip. So there we go. So I need a shovel, rakes, and a skip. So now click project resources. Let's have a look. So shovels, it says, rate work. Well, it's not work because it's not labour. So if I click the drop down menu, we should have an option there called material. As shovels and material. Now, how many shovels do I need? So I can click the cost of the shovels in there. I'm going to put, I'm going to put twenty pounds for some shovels. Rakes again. I'll get some cheapy rakes. So I'm going to put a tenner in there. Again, make sure you use type. It's not labour. It's a material. And again, skip. How much is skip going to cost me? I'd say about one hundred twenty pound. And again. It's a material, select material. And there we go, there's my resources for level the soil. Click OK. Happy with that? Now you click here units, for example, you might decide actually two. Again, you don't need one, you might need two. And click OK. So you see the bottom here, I've got my resources all organised for level the soil. Now you can't see anything there. If I close this window to the right, which is the task timeline option, it's, you're kind of blind in a sense that you see laying the turf and level the soil, but you can't really see the information. Not a problem. Go to the top of the ribbon on my view and select view. Scroll all the way along to show branch data. Now you can choose what you want to see. I recommend, and I also recommend resources. See, and I'm showing them so you can see quickly the start and end dates so you can carry on to your next task and the resources you're using for that. So let's go back to laying the turf. So what's my next task? Again, if you go to the corner, you can double left click or click the insert keys as a sub menu or task. Now, what's my next task? We'll be actually laying the turf. Now, what I'm going to do before I carry on here, I'm just thinking if you want to create another little branch off here for Pacific Labour all to do with laying the turf as one. Show you what I mean, if I double tap here, if we create a little branch here called uh, Labour 1, I call that, and that will be all as you can see for laying the turf. So if I click on that, and then go to Task Timeline, and I'm going to leave everything default here for a second and go to Resources. Now let's have a look at Labour. So I need Labour to level and also I'm going to need labour to lay the turf so click labour click project resources and you see labour here and it's work and you can choose what you want to pay an hour or a week for an hour for work and click OK and you see it pops up here so we've got laying the turf level the soil and laying the turf now if you want to break it down and add labour to a specific option, for example, you want to separate your labour for level the soil and then lay in the turf. So if I click level the soil, so we've got our resources, click the resource option, and we can add another resource then which will be labour. Click on the labour option and click project resources and here we have labour. We know it's work, you can do eight pounds an hour or you can change it. I'm a tight person, so I'll do £6 an hour if I can find anyone to do it. Click OK, and there we go. I've got my labour. But remember, that labour now is over eight days, so you won't actually have labour over that amount of time. Because you have to leave the soil for a while. So we'll click on labour, and you see the percentage units. Let's say. No, actually, I've been a bit tight. I'm going to go 60% and click OK. So I've got labour 60%, so I've clicked show branch data, I see the actual cost so far. Overall cost £410. Now click back on task information, you can see by adding 60%, it's only paying 60% of the units for the cost. Again, if I change the percentage there, to 30% it's probably walk out click OK 
and then you'll see the price change to 295 so if I now scroll down to resources 30% 115 so you can see how you can play around and kind of organize your project management and break down the cost so let me close that window so how's our map looking mm, okay but I don't really want to concentrate on my maps I really want to concentrate on gank charts this is the whole point I was showing you wasn't I so we've got garden project actual cost £295 date so far it's going to take is the 22nd to the 31st and I've got level the soil which is going to cost me 295 and then I've got laying the turf now let's have the cost of laying the turf so click open the task manager again click open task timeline click resources click the one you want then we can add resources for that so let's just put cost turf just keep, let's keep it simple let's just call it cost turf right so we've got the cost there we can put in so the cost will be click project resources cost it's a material so make sure you select material and I reckon that could cost a few bob say 48 square meters say about 155 pound material click OK and it's done click OK so I'll go back to show data show all and we get all the information of how it's going so there's our overall information for level of soil from duration 8 days work actual work 19 hours remaining work and then the cost the actual cost remaining cost and priority completion and all my resources I'm going to use then you go into your next task and you're breaking that all down you can see how easy it is to start building up your map but let me send that to your gank chart project management chart so I'll close this window here go to top left hand corner make sure you're in the view option of the ribbon on matchware mind view and select gant let's zoom in and there we go you now got your gank chart now if you look here deliberately I haven't set the day for laying the turf because I want to do that in the gank chart here so you can see how it works so we've got level the soil 8 days so garden project overall is going to be 8 days because that's all the projects and tasks we've got at the moment as we extend that then the overall garden project will obviously duration will extend if I hold the left button drag it out it's more information to linear on the left I've got laying the turf here if I click on it and I've only got one day now I can click into there I can double tap and add days there that way five days and then I can add the date start date which will be after leveling the soil or I can hold the left button and drag it into position like that and you see as I drag the laying the turf option the whole project has moved to 13 days top left hand corner as the overall project time so far also if we zoom in and I hold the left button drag the completion percentage left and right here to say how it is going so I'm going to drop that halfway for example then that affects the rest of your project at the top as you can see duration hold the left button and you can drag it up if I hold the left button and I just slowly move laying the turf back to there I can choose an option here if I hold the left button and drag it just drag it with the left button you see this little line pop up then let go on the project that you want to connect it to what that does it actually pushes it out it enables the completion of the predecessor to be done before it starts its new task you can see it's left the gap there for the weekend because I haven't enabled weekends a little bit of a taskmaster come up to here where it says project calendar left click and then you can change the days per month there if you require and if I click project calendars you can choose for example people to work weekends just make sure you pay them double time click cancel and click OK you can see hours per day 8 you can change that as well if you want to 6 for example and click OK and of course that will change the amount of days it takes as well because you're doing less hours so let's have a quick look at the ribbon at the top first good option here will be for example laying decking that was my second task so I need tasks underneath laying decking what I need to do within laying decking so I could right click and insert another sub branch 
or much easier highlight it and click your sub branch option here and then you can say what you can do first when laying decking and it obviously will be preparing the surface bit of concrete or whatever so I've got preparing the surface how long you take preparing the surface if I click on that, say I say four days, you see I'm not putting the dates in start or end date at the moment because when I'm in actually project management it's much easier to hold the left button and officially drag to where I want it to be in my project management so I'm going to put that there that little bar above you can see is one of your main tasks so if I go to the top you've got your main task is garden project and you've got your other task which is laying turf so there's all your subtasks underneath that then I've gone to lane decking which is another task and then you've got your subtask again underneath so I've got that down to five days there again I can always hold the left button and then drag and drop it onto my next one to make sure to make sure my previous task is finished before it starts a new one so that's five days for if I come back to here preparing the surface now as so I have these little links here you can see here it has a little arrow for my predecessor to make sure that is finished before I start my new project. Now I'm going to scroll along. As you can see as you're doing this, you can see the completion times changes depending on what you've actually done. Keep scrolling along. There's my resources I'm using at the moment and the amount of hours of work. And at the end we should have the cost as well. And there's my current cost, £450. Not bad. And if I actually click view and go back to a my map, any changes I made in the project management gank chart will be shown in my my map. And there we go, lane decking, and that's the one I added, preparing the surface. But let me go back to gank chart. As this is a basic tutorial to get you up and running, I'm going to run through the ribbon quickly at the top. So we know we can add tasks or subtasks. You can indent if you require, so I'll click indent with the one I've highlighted, or outdent, indent, outdent. Also, if I click on preparing the surface, I can choose to assign resources, the same option I did in the mind map. Click the button and I can add resources to the one I've highlighted, in this case it was preparing the surface. Also, you can add completion time. So if I click into here, which is preparing the surface, you expect 75%, click that, scroll in and you can see 75%. You can hold the left button and drag it back and forth. It turns red so you can see that clearly as well. The link option was what I was doing, holding the left button and then dragging your link onto what you want, as so, so you can use the option up there or you can unlink it if required also if it's a specific task you don't want you to decide for now you can make it inactive by clicking this button inactive task button and see how it comes up so it will do the main task and the sub task and it make them inactive and then you see it so it's disappeared almost on your gank chart so it does not affect your project but I'm going to leave that on anyway go to selected task so for example if I was to click preparing surface and click go to select your task it jumps straight to it as you can see here on the gank chart and click today's date will go to today's date which is Wednesday the 22nd of July zoom in and out that's what it says fit all that's what it says on the box now task information now as I click to prepare in the surface here it gives me all the information for that task so I've got name, duration 5 days I could have estimated that or I could click that and add another day if I wanted to start date the 10th to the 13th completion, again you can up the percentage or lower the percentage priority 500 or you can make that inactive, not required you can have constraints type for example you might want as late as possible, must start on a specific date and time, so it's up to you how you want to work that and then you've got your constraint type there and your constraint date, so you can put a date that you want a constraint to be on be it start no earlier then deadline, click on deadline here, so if I click on a deadline that's the deadline you need it to be done, so I could put the 13th of August and click 
on the 13th of August. Predecessors. These are the tasks before your task. For example, I'm preferring a surface. I could click preferring a surface. Could be laying the turf. So that will affect how that starts and finishes and starts. Now I'm going to zoom in a second. Because you can see little arrows come up. If I the left button and drag it left to right. I added that by using the option task information and I put deadline. So that's the deadline it must be done. Now I'm tick it. It will then click OK, disappear. Go back to task information, predecessor. Go to resources. And you can also add any resources to that task and I didn't add any to that task. This highlights the tasks that are critical to the meeting the project end date. So if I click on it you can see how it highlights at the end date being the main task garden project at the top and the two end tasks at the end. Untick that. Show today's date will jump to today's date. See it highlighting there on the left. Numbering scheme. Let's go to a linear format on the left of your Gantt chart and click the numbering scheme. Let's choose a numbering scheme. And you can see it's numbered in 1, 2, 2.1 and so on. To be honest with you though, if I actually get rid of numbering scheme, I don't think we really need a numbering scheme here because you can see from top 1 all the way down to 6, it numbers them anyway and it's all in order. But I tell you that's good for when you're actually in your mind map to see it as well. Columns, so click into the linear text and you can choose whether or not you want specific things to be shown. For example, if I was untick start date, you want the start date disappear. And you can see on the left here it's gone. So with this column you can choose what you want to see and break things down and what you don't want to see. Go to the bottom, that's where it goes when you untick it to enable it again. Small text, medium or large. Project resources. Now these are all resources I'm using overall for the project and it will show you everything there. Project information, schedule from project start date, start date the 22nd, end date, and that gives you the end of start date of your project so far. Project calendars, again you can change, I showed you this earlier, whether you want weekends included or the hours are required. And project report, and you can export this as a HTML information on the project. So as you can see it's quite easy to use. I'm just going to hold the left button, drag this along to the right and then slide along linear format to see the end bit with the cost and start dates. So 180, 180, 155 and you can see how the cost has worked out for you and as you change things in your gank chart then all your completion times, cost and everything will change also the hours you will change. But let me just go back again. I'm going to go back to so hold the left button and drag that back so as you can see it's quite easy to use, also it's quite good visually, so if I click format at the top, the ribbon, you can change the look of your gank chart. So I might decide actually I want a different field colour, I'm going to make that kind of a ready colour with an outline yellow, and I might even have a field pattern, I prefer more of that style, so it stands out better. Or you can reset it if required. If you go to design, get more options, you get great colour schemes here, just hover over and it will change in real time actually that looks pretty good and then you can click on your specific task and you can change the shape fill colour and even the fill pattern again if you drag the middle button you can change your completion percentage as well there manually Put your task name there, so that will bring up all your task name for each task you're doing, which is a good way of doing it actually, you can see exactly where you're at, and your resources you're using in your map, and they all come up as well. But to finish quickly, I'm going to go back to view, and I'm going to send that back to a map view and a mind map, just to show you how easy it is to swap between the two. Go to show branch data, hide all, and then you can make it more simplistic to see how it looks. Another quick option here, you can drag stuff for example. So I've got laying the turf and I've moved it around when I was indenting. If I hold the left button, I can then drag them up. Hold the left button and drag them on. And there you go. So you can move them around and put them back how they originally were. So if I go back to gank chart, and there we go, all leveled out. 
Remember I didn't enable this, so you can click back on it and enable that task again. And it's again enabled in your gank chart. I've just used a, si a simple gardening option, but as you can see for this option, you can actually do absolutely plan anything you require with project management gank charts. I think I'm going to show you quickly. Let's go to File and select Print. Now you can see if you print that out, it's going to look pretty sad on your wall, isn't it? Why don't we actually turn that around from portrait to a nice landscape? Still a bit small an A4 bit of paper. Why not add a little column there? Mm, that's looking better. Two bits of A4 paper, now how about three bits and then we can blue tack them together or tape them. And we've got, a, no actually I'm going to do four. Let's get that in cartridge going. And then if I print that out with a print button, print out on four separate bits which you then tape together or blue tack together and you've got your project management ready to go. I will do more on gank charts at a later date but that's just a few basics just to get you up and running. Thanks for watching.